I think we can all agree that We Need to Talk About Kevin is a somewhat disturbing and at times frightening film. Not frightening like Jason or Freddy. I'm crazy after all. But more in line with films like M, which focuses on a child murderer. I recently watched We Need to Talk About Kevin with friends and family, and the comment that came from the psychology student in the group was, sociopathic and psychopathic tendencies usually don't display themselves until adolescence. This prompted a second look at the film. What I found is we as viewers are not necessarily dealing with a child who has these issues. What we are dealing with is a mother who is trying not to blame herself for her son's actions. We need to talk about Kevin suffers from an unreliable narrator, a term more commonly associated with literature, but it applies here as well. The reason this might go unnoticed is the film presents itself as being told from the omniscient point of view, and in fiction there is a rule that says that omniscient narrators are authoritative and therefore cannot lie. When breaking the film down though, it becomes clear that the narrator is not omniscient. The key to this is the film's timeline. We need to talk about Kevin begins in the middle of the story and moves toward the future while recounting the events of the past simultaneously. These flashbacks are in fact our narrator's memories, which are inherently subjective. Now, the argument can be made for a limited third person narrator, but I believe the narrator is actually Eva, who, as any parent would, blames herself for her son's actions, and as a result looks for a reason why Kevin would have been doomed from the start. Going back to the psych student's claims, I would wager that the film doesn't actually present psycho and sociopathic tendencies developing in early childhood. Rather, Eva does, and she has every reason to do so. Two down, 50 left to go. I hope you're enjoying watching these as much as I'm enjoying making these. Until next time.